Why? I'm Kenton, and um, I am a recording artist, an entertainer, a preacher, motivational speaker, writer, producer, radio talk show host, HIV and AIDS advocate, as well as activist. The process for me started back around the end of October 2012. I was down in Lithonia, Georgia, um, conducting a revival. And on that Friday, I was sitting at a restaurant table having lunch. And all of a sudden, I just started sweating and feeling like I'm getting sick. Feel like I'm coming down with the flu. Went back to my hotel room, continued to not feel well. On that um, Saturday, I was feeling so bad I was running fevers. That night, I had to be making my way from Lithonia, Georgia to um, Columbia, South Carolina, where I had to sing and preach the next day. By that Monday, they had to call the ambulance to come and to pick me up. I ended up in the hospital for about two weeks with uh, nausea and all of that stuff. Um, the doctor comes into the room and tells me that um, they had checked me for HIV. And he told me that I tested negative. And after being in the hospital and they never really found out what was wrong with me, I continued on going through nausea, night sweats, Fevers, 102, 103, 104, every night during the day and everything for months. I went back to the hospital at the end of December because I was still going through the nausea. I didn't want to eat nothing and just everything made me sick. And um, when I got back in the hospital there, I said to the doctor, I said, I know there's something wrong with me. I said, I don't know whether it's a... It could, whether it's a bacteria, a fungus, or a virus, but whatever you have to check me for, check me because I know my body, I know something's wrong. It happened to be on January the 1st, 2013. I was sitting uh, in my room in the hospital, and the doctor walks in and says to me, um, Kenson, your test came back positive for HIV. And as he turned to walk out of the bedroom, he said, this would be my last day seeing you. Happy New Year's. I actually was a patient at John Hopkins, and they have different surveys where they come in and um, you can volunteer to do different interviews. There was someone that came in to do an interview that I volunteered for. While we were talking, he says, have you ever heard about um, Jacques? I said, no, I didn't know what it was. I didn't know it was a, a, a program. I thought it was a person, you know. He said, man, you really need to get connected with Jop. And um, so he said, when I'm finished with you, he said, I'm going to get you some information. He actually texted me and said, I think it would be best if you just don't even call. He said, just go in and do a walk-in. That particular day um, when I came in, I didn't know really all about what they were about, but I knew that it was a place that I could go and get connected to care. And I knew that their their model was a journey to wellness. And um, so going that first day, um, when I got there, it was a great experience because they were so warm and so hospitable. You know, it was almost like, I had come home, you know, and family was there welcoming me. And so it really was a very warm experience for me. And um, I became very comfortable with that and having the experience of others who are HIV positive to share their stories. It became inspiring. It inspired me all the more to know that I'm on the right road and I'm moving in the right direction. And um, it has been one of the greatest experiences of my life. Because it's a program that predominantly deals with, with people who have um, alcohol and substance abuse backgrounds, I ended up being made to go to NA and AA meetings. 
And by me being made to go there, those actually helped me to grow. They gave me accountability. You know, the case management and everything gave me accountability. It made me accountable. It held me to being focused, to doing what I needed to do because I was going through depression. And still, a lot of other health issues at the same time that are far beyond, you know, the HIV. I would have preferred to have just been in bed. But because I was in this program, I was almost forced to move beyond what I was going through and feeling physically and get the stuff done that I had to get done. Having to apply for uh, food stamps and uh, cash assistance because I was broke. I didn't have any money. I wasn't working. I didn't have any insurance. And they helped to kind of get me started on a treatment plan and moving forward and staying focused towards my goal. After living in a transitional home and becoming the manager of one of the houses here at um, New Vision House of Hope, I have a, a, a dream and when I aspire to actually open my own transitional house. And particularly, I want to house um, HIV positive young adults. I see myself opening a number of different houses not just here in Baltimore City, but in some other cities around the country, particularly maybe back in my hometown of Patterson, New Jersey, and maybe back in Harlem. My family, um, disclosure to my family, I think they were the most important um, piece for me and always have been. So when I found out that I was positive, um, I told my oldest sister first, and then I called her um, maybe a few weeks later and I said, I really need to tell the family because I not only want them to know, but um, I really believe I'm going to have to go public about my status. And I would rather them hear it from me than to find out from somewhere else. I wanted to empower my family. That afternoon, she said, I've set up, I have a free conference line. And I set up a conference call for tonight for um, all of your brothers and sisters. They called in that night and I told them. And they were, I mean, overwhelmingly <clears throat> embracing. It wasn't easy telling them, but I knew I had to. And their responses were, well, we love you still. I didn't deal with the stigma from them that um, a lot of people deal with with their family. So I say kudos to my family, yeah. <laughs> Finding out that I was HIV positive um, for me was like a bend in the road. And um, I remember this quote, and I don't, it's an unknown person. I don't know who actually came up with it, but the quote says that a bend in the road is not the end of the road unless you fail and make the turn. And so for me, I'm determined, you know, not to fail to make that turn. And I've been making the turn and um, moving forward and not letting that bend in the road be the end of the road. Yeah. Going into City Uprising, I didn't exactly know what to expect. I actually served as a greeter greeting people as they came in at the door. And then later on in the day, um, I actually transitioned from being a greeter to being a prayer. So people that literally wanted prayer, um, they would call me to actually pray for them. And um, after getting into City Uprising and doing it, the experience was awesome. It has just validated all the more what my purpose is and that um, my journey has begun. I'm gonna continue moving forward. And I must say that volunteering not only helps other people, but it helps me too. It gives me increased value and self-worth. We've talked about the whole mental health aspect of this, you know, and there is no way that you can uh, find out that you're HIV positive and not deal with some mental health situations. There's a lot of emotional stuff that you begin to consider. Number one, as a preacher, you know, um, 
um, if I ever start pastoring again, will um, will people be okay with having a pastor that they know is HIV positive? You know, um, will they be comfortable um, having an, a um, HIV positive pansexual pastor? <laughs> There's so much more to me than me being HIV positive, but I am an HIV positive, pansexual pastor. My whole thing is I don't really like labels, but um, if a person needs a label, um, I'm not going to answer to what people call me. I'm going to give them the label that I'm most comfortable with, and that's what I'm most comfortable with. Look it up. <laughs>